the Hall of Fame, this is another thing where this was such a big part of our life as baseball fans, this hall that made sense and we understood the parameters and it really meant something when you made it. Yeah. And then as always with this stuff, PDs just, PDs, first of all, made it impossible to figure out what the records were and how Mm -hmm. to compare things. I know we have some stats like war and certain things, but I don't know how you look at Barry Bonds' stats from 1999 to 2005 and figure out how to compare that to anything, (laughs) uh, much less some of the other stuff we had. Um, But then on top of it, the the moralism, which I've been writing about this. I wrote a column, I think in 06, 07, about how stupid it was that Mark McGuire wasn't going to be in the Hall of Fame because I always thought the point of the Hall of Fame was it's a museum. It captures all of the people that mattered in baseball. And you can't tell me that Barry Bonds and McGuire and Clemens and all these dudes, like they mattered. They were the, the biggest stars we had. I never felt the need to get moral about it because just put it on the plaque put them in their own room. But if the goal is like you and I to take our sons to the hall of fame to not have certain people in the hall of fame to me seems insane. Where do you yeah. stand on this? Oh, I, I, exactly in the same place uh, for, and I'll say a couple of things about this. First of all, and everyone always points this out whenever this debate comes up, there are already terrible people in the hall. Of fame. <laughs> Lots so, of them. so many of them, like basically, you know, baseball was segregated, not by rule. There was no law that said no black people allowed. It was just a sort of gentleman's agreement. And one of the gentlemen who formed the agreement was Cap Anson, who was just like, we should never let black people in. And everyone was like, you're right, Cap Anson. Cap Anson's in the Hall of Fame. (laughs) And so, and no, and by the way, it's now, you know, 2022. No one cares about Cap Anson. Like no one cares. People care about Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens and Gary Sheffield and, and Manny Ramirez and Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire. And the if the idea of the museum is to tell the story of baseball, okay, great. Tell the story. Yeah, on Cap Anson's plaque, write a little note that says, by the way, yeah. this is one of the guys who literally said no black people should be allowed. He was a great player. And he, he, this is not, it's like the time, you know what I always think of as the time man of the year or person of the year. Hitler was the time man of the year one year because the point isn't who's the best, nicest person. The point is who was the person who was, presence in the universe was the most important or noteworthy. And in 19, whatever it was, 40, I think, or 39 or 38, it was Adolf Hitler. They weren't endorsing him as a dude. They were saying this guy mattered in the world and in a horrible... In the worst possible way. In, yeah. the, in literally maybe the worst way that anyone has ever mattered. But that's that's what that award or or whatever you want to call it is designed to do. So if the point of the museum is simply to tell the story. Then you got to tell the whole story. You got to tell the whole story of steroids. You can't ignore it. You, you have to tell the story of the cream and the clear and of, uh, of Alex Rodriguez, you know, uh, and down in Miami buying stuff in a paper bag. You got to tell the whole deal. And like the problem with it, in my mind, has always been that MLB and the museum are like related. They're cousins but they're not the same organization. It was started by a dude who liked baseball and was like, hey, we should have a museum to, to, like, to write about baseball and to celebrate the history of baseball. So there's this weird alliance where like, it's not actually run by the league. The people who vote on it are writers. It's not MLB officials or ex-players or anything. It's, it's the guys who cover the game. And so it's just this odd thing where like the rules are so unclear. There's a morals clause in the voting but again, Rogers Hornsby and Cap Anson and all these guys, Ty Ty Cobb. Cobb are, yeah, they're all in. So that's clearly been ignored. For about, isn't of, Tom Yaki in there? It's a good question. I don't know. But well, if, he, if he's in there, that's if he somebody. Is, that, there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, get Jackie Robinson off the field. Like, not a great guy. Yeah. Um, so so I, it's, it's just, I think you're right. I have a pitch. So tell me what you think of this. Because I, I, I was talking about this with Joe Posnanski. He and I do a podcast called the podcast for Meadowlark. And here's my pitch. I, it wasn't, I don't, I don't even know if it was actually my idea, but I, I believe it's a good idea. If you are in that club, the Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, Gary Sheffield, Manny Ramirez, Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire club of guys who did something to kind of cheat or embarrass the game. My pitch is instead of having to wait five years after you retire, it's a 10 year penalty. You have to wait 15 years. Mm. And then and then after 15 years, you remove you essentially remove the morals clause from 
from the voting and you just say you're only voting on the merits of their on-field accomplishments. Now, that would require the writers to actually do that, right? It would require that you can't look inside a person's brain. You don't know what they're thinking about or what they're not. But at least it would be like a prison sentence. And then it's like, okay, now you've served your time and you've gotten out and you are treated like anybody else. What do you think of that idea? I was thinking, I was thinking you could even go further. You can't get in until you're dead. <laughs> You don't get to enjoy the ceremony. But when then, you're dead, we'll let you in. But what if what if you let's imagine that something like what I'm proposing happens, right? And, I would say 15 year prison sentence. That's okay. So I like it say, though. I, I like that. I like the idea though. I like the let's say 15 sentiment. year. Let's say 15 year prison sentence, and then you get Mark McGuire, 65 year old, 70 year old Mark McGuire gets in, and he gets up there and he says, "Taking steroids was the biggest mistake I ever made." And I regret it. And I'm so sorry to the people I hurt. And I'm sorry to the fans of St. Louis, which, by the way, some of those guys always wanted to say, and just the, the union or, his, or their PR guys or whatever were telling them they shouldn't. But you could tell McGuire uh, and Jason Giambi. Remember that weird press conference Giambi had where he just kept saying, I'm sorry. And they were like, what are you sorry for? And he's like, I'm not so going to get just, into what just, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just, like, just, just know that sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like... I think that would be to some degree healing, right? If you if these guys served their time, got in, and then were allowed to just talk about it where it wouldn't affect them. And in part, I think they haven't apologized or come totally clean because they were worried that it would affect whether they got into the Hall of Fame or not, right? So like something, I, I just, so there needs to be a rule. No one has ever come up with the rule for how we do this. And as a result, it's a mess and baseball is just covering its eyes with its hands and hoping that it all goes away. Well, so here's, I like everything about this idea except for one thing. So how do you explain the guy that we don't know for sure if anything bad happened with them or not? Now, the non-Red Sox fans would default to our guy, David Ortiz, for this. That man is a saint and I will not hear a single word said against him. Yeah, also, where's your proof? He ended up in some <laughs> weird New York Times thing that said he took something, but w could it have been Sudafed? Yeah. We, we still don't know what it was. And also, everything was legal 2004 and earlier, and I've just never understood the Ortiz thing. It's become this twisted... It reminds me of a lot of the stuff that happens like in the actual country where just a piece of a fact gets twisted and then becomes like a different fact reality to people I, I think, think that yeah people think like he was in like a biogenesis clinic and got caught it's like that's not what happened no we're and obviously we are uh we're biased in his favor however yes, i feel are. this i feel the same way about anyone who is in that leaked mitchell report thing which is like two t for two reasons one it was leaked illegally and i don't think that should be held against anybody and but more way more importantly there were no rules. There was no testing regimen. There was no actual rule for what you should do or not do in baseball. It, there was a vague rule about competitive, whatever they called it, but like everybody was ignoring that. And that just because everybody's doing it doesn't make it right. I'm just saying that the thing, the, the difference between someone like Bonds, about whom there was an entire book written where we know exactly what he did and when he did it, where he bought it, how he yeah. went about it, all that stuff. There's a difference between that and someone who showed up on the Mitchell Report test, when, which was supposed to be anonymous, and which we still don't to this day even know what they were testing. We for. don't know if it was like Ritalin. We don't like we right. literally don't know what it was because whatever was on that list, it was like now we sound like apologists. But I'm telling you, go research this. Anyone who's listening, there was there was like a hundred different things that qualified for. Did you yeah. take any of these things? So we don't know what it was. And we don't. It know. was also and illegal to even share it. And by the way, I feel the same way about Sheffield. I would, I feel yep. the same way about any anyone, any Yankee from that, anyone who was on that list. Like that was not anything approaching scientific rigor, and so that it, that all of that data is meaningless. Everyone who showed up on the report, I I would ignore and I would not hold it against anyone. And then Ortiz played obviously at a time it, starting in two thousand whatever it was two thousand four five, where there was an actual testing regimen, and, and his so, stats stay, remained the same. Right. For so, 10 and, more years. And so if you played during the testing regimen and didn't test positive, then in my opinion, you cannot hold, you can't say, well, that person did steroids. Like you can't, like that, like if you're going to take it into account and you think it matters, you at least have to have a system for how you take it into account. And I, I feel like now what happened was everybody from that era, first of all, everybody from that era is probably doing something. Like I was Ortiz doing something? Probably. I don't know. 
the hell do I know? But like so many guys where everyone, you know, it's so funny is everyone's like, oh, Scott Rowland. Scott Rowland got a boost this year because he's seen as a clean player because there's never been any smoke. Yeah, or how the fire. fuck do we know? How do we, we know? don't know? Like, <laughs> have you seen? But go back and look at pictures of Scott Rowland. That dude was jacked. Like, was he doing something? I don't know. I, I have no idea. No, but like everyone from that time ha- had, it's like a coin flip, whether or not they were using something Weird. illegal. It's just the point is that the, the, the league didn't care. And if the league didn't care, you can't hold it against them. We're right about Ortiz. I'm, this is not two homers defending Ortiz. We're correct. Where I fall apart is when I defend Manny Ramirez to people after like two <laughs> drinks. Where I'm like, he never did it. He's the greatest natural hitter ever. Near the end, he, he was, was trying to like, hold on. He was caught like three times. I know. I still, I still defend that guy <laughs> in the end. That's where I'm like, I, you can fully pick me apart with my Manny defenses. Um, you mentioned A-Rod. This is one of the many reasons baseball makes no sense to me. Now, we also have a terrible commissioner. I don't, Manfred is rising up the rankings. I don't, Gary Bettman to me will always be the gold standard. Goodell is right there. And especially if Goodell mangles this Flores thing, Goodell might even pass Gary Bettman. But Manfred's like putting together a nice resume. He really is, yeah. So you have Alex Rodriguez, who isn't allowed in the Baseball Hall of Fame because he cheated, he was suspended, the whole thing. And he admitted it. Yeah. And he admitted it. And now he's, we morally cannot have him in our hallowed baseball of fame, but we can have him on two different networks talking right. about live baseball games. <laughs> How the fuck does that make sense? <laughs> it is wild. And also he's not even any good at it. That's what he's, really bugs me. Yeah. <laughs> he's, it's like, it's, it, that's what I mean. They have no rules, right? Like the, there are, there are, have been moments in the past where baseball has said like, this is a bright line that you cannot cross. And one of those bright lines was gambling. And it was in every clubhouse and it was in every, it was posted in every clubhouse. You cannot gamble on games because of cocaine. The Black Sox cocaine scandal. was another one. Hey, don't do sure. cocaine. Not but, allowed. So Pete Rose gets banned for life from baseball. And everybody says, hey, after a while, that's come on. He's all time hit leader. Like, it, it's, this is ridiculous. And, but to me, it's like, look, I didn't make the rule. I'm not judging the rule, but everybody knew it was the rule. The rule was very clear. And it was like, there's basically at that time, one thing that you can't do. There's one thing that they were like, if you do this, you're in big trouble. And he did that one thing. And so whether or not you think it's right that he's banned from the Hall of Fame, you have to at least say like, hey, he knew the rule. Like he, he willingly flaunted the rule and when it comes to PEDs, there was no rule. There was no guidelines. Nothing was posted. Everyone knew it was happening. Everybody turned the other way because the, the Sosa McGuire home run chase was such a big deal. Fans were pouring into the stands. TV contracts were going through the roof. Everybody kind of wanted it to continue. And so to now, years later, come down with a hammer and say, well, how dare you mess with the hallowed institution that is the competition in baseball. It's the worst. It doesn't make any sense because there was no rule. And if you don't, you know this, you have kids. If you don't tell kids what the rules are, they will go crazy. And that's what happened. And so I, I just, with the Hall of Fame and with the game in general, it just, it's so galling to me that they refused to lay down what the actual rules were and are now punishing people for not following the rules which they never laid down. Doesn't make any sense. It's out of control. And the Pete what? Rose thing is a great example where you're right. I can see how he's not in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. I don't necessarily think after that all one, this I'm not, time... I'm not going to bat for Pete Rose. Uh, yeah, I'm you just can't. Not. You Plus, can. we're pretty sure he bet against his team he was managing. Like, we have some pretty good evidence <laughs> on that, which to me is, <clears throat> seems like the third rail. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I he claims he never did, but but I, I don't There's know. There's a I just, good book about it that refutes pretty pretty intensely. I just feel like if you said to me, hey, the one thing you can never do if you and I are going to be friends is insult cheers. And if you <laughs> insult cheers, I will uh, like our friendship is over. And then like for the next three years, quietly in text threads to other people, I was like, can you believe Bill thinks cheers is a good show? Like that show sucks. No, I, I'll give you a worse example. And then it came out that I came up with the Applebee's spot using the Cheers theme <laughs> for, for a bit. <laughs> it's just the all time most flagrant uh, violation in the history of TV commercials. The yeah. Cheers theme is untouchable. You can't use it, Applebee's. Sorry. 
Yeah, it's a weird move. But the point is, is like if you then found those texts and learned about me inventing right. the Applebee's you're commercial, out. and you said you, we can't be friends anymore, and I said, what are you talking about? How could you do this to me? Like your response would be, I told you you couldn't do this, and yeah. so that's that's Pete Rose, but it's not definitively not the steroids guys, and that's what's really that's what really makes no sense. I thought Doug Glanville's piece about this did make me think because <clears throat> I think. Just the way our world works with the group think, and especially on Twitter, that people got really mad about the Hall of Fame thing, right? Which yeah. you and I have been there for a while, and it's, these guys have to be in. And then Doug Glanville wrote a really thoughtful piece about, hey, here's what it was like to play against these guys. Yeah. Um, I did it on the level. A lot of my guys did. Um, it was much harder to play against them. <laughs> and I don't think they should be in. And he laid out a really good case. And that's why this is a great argument. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, I, it was a very good piece. He's a really good writer, that guy. And I, I like it is a good perspective where we can sit from our vantage point and just talk about like the way the league handled it. But like on it, that is the on the field issue, right? The on the field issue is half the league or whatever knew that the other half was using. And they were, I mean, that's why Bonds started doing it. Remember, Bonds watched yeah, McGuire and Sosa. And he, and he was like, I'm better than those guys and they're juicing and they're getting all the headlines and they're the ones who were the heroes and everything. Yeah, he, he was read, like, fuck this. Yeah, and he also read into it racism, which I think is correct. Like that the world was so happy to have Mark McGuire be the one to, to win. And so he snapped and he started using and then it rocketed him past both of them into, the, into a stratosphere no one will ever reach again. And so I like that the what Glanville says is essentially what we already know from Bonds and other people was going on, which is half the league knew the other half was using. They they were fed up with it. They hated watching it. They hated the fact that they had were competing on an uneven playing field. And so then more guys started doing it just to keep up. And again, when the league never says, Hey, everyone, <laughs> why don't you stop? Why don't you stop using this stuff? You can't get angry at them. I'm sorry. Like it's it. It's not ideal. It's not ethical. It's not great. But you can't punish them institutionally for something that they didn't, that wasn't told to them, would was worthy of punishment. Well, our two heroes from that era, our guy Pedro, yeah, his stats during that era. When you consider what was going on and how different they were from every other pitching stat, it's one of the great achievements in the history of the sport. The, the ninety nine o o seasons that he had, I think, are. You, it's pretty easy to make the argument that the two greatest pitching seasons of all time with the, everything that was going on. His league, his ERA, uh, his ERA plus in one of those years was over 300, which means he was three times better than the average <laughs> right. pitcher, which is, you know, <laughs> the, his, his ERA was... Uh, it felt one, that way in the moment. Yeah, like the league ERA was 493 and his was yeah. like one, 193 or something. I mean, it's, it's bananas what he did. So you have him. The other hero is our guy, Rich Garces, aka El Guapo, who... <laughs> You have all these PD guys. <laughs> he comes in. He's built like a penguin. He's yep. 280 pounds. It's just running in from the bullpen. He's winded <laughs> and was able to get guys out in the eighth inning. Those are my two heroes from that era. I mean, it, it's a, a truly heroic. Heroes is the right word. They're, 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 it was Probably. Rich Garces was the most fun player in baseball that one year that he was dominating somehow in the eighth inning. God, I've never so seen more joy in the stands than him running out from the bullpen. <laughs> And drunk, drunk mass holes and people like myself, just pure delight, holding yeah. beer, just like, this is amazing. I can't yeah. believe I'm here for this. And then he would strike out two of the next three guys. Yeah. It's why also Bartolo Colon is the greatest another hero one. baseball That's has great. ever created. It's because, yeah, he's another one. Yeah. Yeah. Him, him hitting that home run might be the great single greatest baseball moment of all time. Bartolo Colon. <laughs> 